going to discuss recruitability at the bedside, uh, so how, what's the concept and how to use it. And, uh, and this is a recently taken photograph of uh, beautiful Toronto. So, um, so my laboratory is working with a number of companies and uh, uh, also with uh, General Electric, which is sponsoring today this uh, symposium. Um, this is a very, very important paper because it showed for the first time since the description of ARDS that PEEP could help to reduce mortality. You see patients with ARDS, there is a significant 5% reduction uh, in, in absolute mortality difference. Whereas patients with, uh, we would say, mild ARDS today, so non, uh, with acute lung injury non-ARDS, have no benefit from PIP. So this is not directly a randomized control trial. This is the aggregate of three randomized control trials in what we call an individual meta-analysis, so at the individual patient level. Uh, and it's, uh, again, uh, very important news because this was the first time there was a significant effect. But in the other hand, it's a small effect. You see only a 5% difference. And maybe, uh, because we have been talking, discussing, looking at PIP for a long time, maybe we can do a better job in better individualizing the PIP titration, which in this study was done with, with different means. Uh, and the reason for that was shown here by Luciano Gattinoni, uh, looking at CT scans of patients with ARDS and comparing uh, the amount of open lung at five centimeters of water and at 45 centimeters of water. And he computed what was the lung recruitability, so how much of the lung could be reopened by increasing the pressure up to 45. And uh, this is the distribution of patients, the number of patients in the different amounts of potentially recruitable lung. And really the message of this slide is that it goes everywhere from zero, some patients absolutely non-recruitable, to 40, 45, or even 60%. So all these patients are called ARDS. In the trials, we more or less applied uh, um, similar PIP titration in all the patients, and we did not try to see how to detect recruitability. Uh, which could be very important for the clinical application of PEEP. And why does this matter? Because those patients with a high potential for recruitment, so it's the same patient than in the slide before, but they are separated just based on the median value between those with a high recruitment and those with a low recruit recruitability. Uh, when you look at the non aerated lung tissue and the uh, look at what happens between end expiration and end inspiration, you see that there is the reopening of the lung during mechanical inflation. So tidal inflation reopen the lung. You may say that's good, but what's bad is that the next expiration this will collapse. So the higher the intratidal recruitment, the higher will be the collapse, and these patients will have repeated reopening and closing. Uh, the other group of patients, they will have, uh, sorry, uh, the same patients if you apply PEEP, so if you start not from five, but to 15 of PEEP, you markedly reduce the amount of tidal recruitment, which means that you keep the lung open. 
So in these patients, applying a high PIP is worth the price, uh, the price to pay, which is distension. In the other group, the low potential recruiters, you do not have reopening and collapse. So from the standpoint of protecting the lung from reopening and collapse, in these patients, there is no role for protecting ventilation to apply a high PIP. And today, we are not really very good at determining the, this at the bedside. Maybe looking at oxygenation could help. And in fact, uh, when we look back at the database of uh, two of the randomized trial, the LOVES and the EXPRESS trial, uh, we look at the response in terms of oxygenation. First, it's interesting to see the change in PF ratio after changing PIP. Uh, there is a wide variety of response. Uh, increasing PIP usually increase PF ratio, but not always, and to a very uh, wide uh, range in patients. And interestingly, this is a, a retrospective analysis of the data. When we looked at those patients who look at this red line, those patients who increased uh, oxygenation, so increase the delta PF ratio, after PEEP increase, the higher the response in terms of oxygenation, the better the outcome when they received high PEEP. Okay, if you look at all patients who have an increase in PEEP, those who increase oxygenation have a better outcome, which could suggest, but that's very indirect, that maybe response to PEEP is indicative of a better recruitment and receiving high PIP when you are recruitable leads to a better outcome. That's possible, that needs to be tested prospectively and as you've seen from the preceding slide, it's not very, very accurate because uh, again, you have a wide range of response. So maybe oxygenation and I think that's what clinicians use at the bedside when the patient is responder, we usually put higher PIP. Uh, to be more, to, to more individualize the treatment, we would need to measure recruitment. So recruitment has been measured by CT scan. This is not applicable for clinical purpose. The first technique which could be applicable is the pressure volume curve, the PV curve technique, which is now provided automatically on some ventilators. And the recruitment would be the amount of volume obtained for the same pressure. Let me explain that. So this would be a PV curve from ZIP. And then if you have your patient uh, ventilated, you could increase PEEP from zero from to 10 and then repeat the second PV curve. Uh, but the second PV curve is just the increase in pressure and volume from the starting point. The starting point would be your PIP of 10. So the real question is, uh, but what was the volume at PIP 10 above FRC to correctly place the second curve? Is it starting from the same point or is it starting from a higher point? So to measure recruitment, this is feasible, you need to measure what is the volume when you start from a PEEP of 10, the volume above FRC. It's not impossible to get. In fact, you just simply need to go from PEEP to ZIP and measure the expired volume. So this would be something like that. Your patient is on PIP 10, you abruptly go to PIP 0 and you measure the expired volume during this phase. So the expired volume would be the inspired volume plus 
the volume which was kept by PIP. So for instance, if you have a tidal volume of 500 and you see an expired volume in this phase of 1500, it would mean that you were one liter above FRC. So once you know that, you can say, well, my second PV curve can start from here, PIP 10, one liter above FRC, and you can place this second PV curve. And what we call recruitment is the volume which has been recruited or gained. It's a difference in volume for the, a given pressure. I hope you have understood. We will have questions about that uh, at the end. So it's feasible, and it has been done a lot in research. It's still a bit complicated at the bedside. So the next technique which could help us could be a direct measurement of lung volume, and I'm going to show you why a direct measurement of lung volume could help. Um, we know from almost the early description of ARDS that the main characteristic of ARDS is it's a restrictive lung disease. It means all lung volumes, aerated lung volume, the one we can measure, are markedly reduced. This is uh, a study, for instance, from the group of uh, Luciano, showing that uh, ARDS patients have a functional residual capacity, which is approximately 40% of the theoretical value. Uh, this is a study we did uh, uh, using, uh, uh, so, so measuring FRC and comparing in every patient, single individual patient, the high bar is the theoretical value. And you see that on average, FRC is around uh, less than one liter whereas the theoretical FRC supine, because it's supposed to be lower supine than uh, um, upright, is, uh, should be around two liter. And uh, the, the two black dots you see for every individual patient is the new lung volume after increasing PIP to five or to 15. Uh, so we have a technique which uh, makes this measurement feasible at the bedside, and this technique is uh, called the washout washing technique, uh, and this is uh, one of these studies which uh, estimated the accuracy of the technique. It's reasonably accurate. You see that the, the, the standard deviation uh, is around uh, 200 ml, which compared to the one liter or 1.5 liter is, is acceptable, I think, for clinical purpose. How with this technique could we estimate recruitment? Because you remember, uh, recruitment is not simply the increase in lung volume. It's the increase in lung volume uh, on top of the inflation of the, the, the previously open lung volume. So in this study, we tried to validate a method which could be applied at the bedside to directly measure recruitment in the individual patient with ARDS. We used the PV curve techniques as the reference method to measure recruitment. And we measure the N expiratory lung volume, so it's not FRC because it's at different PEEP levels, uh, at the uh, first PEEP level of uh, around five, and the second PIP level around 15. We did not want to measure FRC at ZIP because we don't like to put an ARDS patient at ZIP, even if it's for a few minutes. So we just make the measurements at five and 15. Then we say, okay, when we have the patient at PIP five, we can measure the compliance Compliance is volume over pressure. And from compliance, we can say if we increase the pressure, the PIP, by this amount, we can predict what, will be the increase, what should be the increase in volume. So for instance, if you measure that the compliance at the low PIP is 20 milliliter per centimeter of water, 
and you're going to increase your PIP from 5 to 15, which is a delta PIP of 10. If everything remains equal, your lung volume should increase by 200 ml. This is, uh, Luciano said this is uh, 11 years old uh, mat uh, level, okay? Measure compliance, delta PIP, you say, okay, lung volume should increase by 200 ml. And then, with the PV curve technique, we measure the uh, recruitment, and we say maybe when, you measure, when we measure lung volume, if the lung volume increase is higher than 200 ml, this is recruitment, okay? Especially because between 5 and 15, the, the PV curve is almost linear, so it's the same compliance, and if we observe a higher increase in the lung volume than predicted, this should be recruitment. And for instance, in our patients where we had predicted 200 ml increase, we observe a 600 ml increase, so maybe the recruitment in this patient is 400 ml, which is a relatively high recruitment compared to the, the, the previous data. And it works well. It's not perfect, it's not completely accurate, but it gives a very reasonable estimate, simply comparing the predicted increase in lung volume to the observed increase in lung volume. So from just two lung volume measurements, it's feasible, possible at the bedside to estimate what could be the recruitment. Uh, and this would be a, an illustration of uh, a, a patient, for instance, where you have the tidal volume. It starts from uh, the first N expiratory lung volume at PIP5. You go to PIP15. You predict this increase in lung volume at PIP15. Uh, if the second N expiratory lung volume is as predicted, you would say this patient is totally non-recruiter. By contrast, the, these other patients, starting from the same point, you predict to be there, but the second lung volume is much higher, so this means this patient is a high recruiter. So, uh, just to finish, like to illustrate the way we could uh, make it even simpler for the clinician, and we worked on an app for that, to say you could, uh, for instance, uh, put the initial N expiratory in lung volume for the first PIP. Uh, the ventilator could measure compliance. Then you would have what is the expected increase, and everything above that would be recruitment. So, for instance, in this patient, uh, this would be the total increase in lung volume and the percentage of increase, which is purely recruitment. So, this would be a patient in whom I would like to put a uh, high PIP. Uh, another patient who will stay there would probably not benefit from a high PIP. Uh, so I will stop there. I think we have now interesting tools based on physiology, which could help to better individualize the PIP therapy, which we know is important uh, for uh, the, the most uh, sicker ARDS patients, but which is also a therapy uh, with side effects. Thank you very much.